We have a massive problem in this country, something very scary, something good for silver and gold investors. We know why we buy, why we hold silver. Some of you hold gold, precious metal mining stocks, but we have a major issue that nobody's talking about, but we're going to talk about. You know why? Because you're not afraid. I'm not afraid. We have the courage to look at what's going on and make decisions for our own personal safety and well-being, that of our families. Because guys, we need to talk about the national debt. And it's getting very interesting because it's not just us talking about it. Jerome Powell himself had some fascinating things to say during his most recent press conference, but nobody wants to talk about it. And it is a freight train barreling down the tracks, heading straight at us. And it's important, and we need to know what is going on. Now, what became very interesting was during the press conference, somebody asked Jerome Powell about the financial position of the United States. And his answer was this. He said, the financial position of the United States is unsustainable. Oh, okay. Why is that not? Let me ask you, why is that not front page news? Why does nobody care? I'm going to give you a little story. I'll give you a little hint, <clears throat> a little tip, a little life tip, if you will. I was at the neighborhood pool. My neighborhood, we have a pool. We pay 400 bucks a year. It's a great deal. Great pool, lifeguards, kids go there, whatever. I went up there this weekend. I'm sitting there, and I love all my neighbors. I've always found it very important. It's so key for you guys. Get along with your neighbors the best you can. But there's a couple of them that bug me. <laughs> I'm sure I don't bug any of them, maybe more than uh, they bug me. But nonetheless, this one came up and was talking to me. I thought, I don't want to talk to this guy. I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll start talking about silver and gold. That'll get him because nobody wants to talk about silver and gold, right? Well, he still hung around. And I thought, you know what? If that doesn't work, I'm going to pull out the A-bomb. I'm going to talk about the national debt. And that got him to leave, right? He suddenly needed to go check on his kid in the pool or something like that. Nobody wants to talk about the national debt. Why is this not front page news? And it is going to have a major implication on the dollar and the value of precious metals, because there's really two ways it can play out. And we're going to talk about it. It's simple and easy to understand. But when the dollar, when the, when the hens come home to roost on the U.S. dollar, we're going to see unbelievable price appreciation in silver and gold. Value, right? That's why we hold the stuff. Nick Timoros from the Wall Street Journal asked Jerome Powell about monetizing the U.S. debt. He asked Jerome, would you indeed, if need be, right? Because, guys, who's going to buy all this debt? Who you got two, two big things to consider, right? The U.S. government has so much debt, they have to keep refinancing, refinancing. Who wants it? The foreigners don't want it, right? Americans only have so much money available to them. Who's going to buy all this debt? And then if anybody like is not, um, I'm just going to say it, dumb as a box of rocks, <laughs> and they look at the financial situation in the United States, who wants to buy a 10-year bond? Who believes that they're going to get like value out of that bond when they look at the financial condition of the United States? So Timoros asked, asked Powell, he said, would you monetize the debt if need be, right? To control the situation, to control. And Powell said, no, absolutely not. Now, that's a big, big deal because that can lead to some really horrible, unforeseen circumstances for the U.S. economy, for consumers in the economy. And again, we're going to talk about that as well. Big stuff that we do need to be afraid of uh, that could be coming down the road. And there's a caveat to that as well. Finally, this is where it gets funny. This is where it gets not really funny, but angering to a certain degree. As Paul was talking about the fact that the U.S. financial situation is unsustainable, okay, right? <clears throat> I mean, he said it himself, unsustainable. He basically then said that we're going to have to deal with it, right? We're going to have to 
you know, rein in spending. We're going to have to deal with this situation, but just not right now. Things are too delicate. Things are too sensitive, right? We're going to have to deal with that at some future point. We're going to have to deal with the fact that our country is bankrupt at some future point. Well, I got news for you, Jerome. It ain't, it's not getting any better. It's not getting any better, right? They said 10 years ago, probably, well, we're going to have to deal with it at some point. They aren't dealing with it. So guys, one of two things is likely to happen out of this situation. Okay. Number one, let's say Jerome tells the truth. Now that would be shocking, right? Because we have discussed at nauseum, Jerome does not tell the truth. Gold and silver know that Jerome doesn't tell the truth. We know Jerome doesn't tell the truth, but all the sheeple out there, all the people who watch TV cable news with their mouths open, like fly catchers, right? They believe everything they see on TV, including when it comes to an official from our federal government, because they don't even realize that the Federal Reserve's not part of our government. It's no more federal than the federal in Federal Express. But I digress. Okay? They believe, Jerome, oh, we're not going to monetize the debt, right? So let's just say, which is a fallacy, that's the same Jerome who two years ago told us that interest rates were going to remain at zero through 2023. Knock, 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 knock. I got news for you, right? We're not even halfway through 2023, and they've raised rates to what, 5.5%? Had the fastest rate of interest rate hikes in history, but suddenly we're going to believe Jerome because he's never, ever going to monetize the U.S. debt. Okay, great. So nobody's going to buy the debt, right? Who's got who's who's going to buy it? We already covered this. The foreigners don't want it. Uh, Americans, well, you know, <laughs> maybe a lot of them are uh, dense enough to buy it, but nonetheless, they're going to run out of money. And as the debt grows and grows, because remember, guys, there's no longer a debt limit. There's no longer a ceiling. It's unlimited. We've a lot. We've given our our politicians who've done such an awesome job for us. Now, they can spend unlimited amounts of money through what January of 2025. Okay. Oh, I get it. When nobody wants to buy the debt, okay, and the and the Fed's not going to buy it. That means they have to keep raising the rates. the 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 price of the bonds goes down, and the rate goes up. All right. Now that creates massive problems. That makes more banks go belly up because they're already sitting on massive losses in their bond portfolios. Those higher rates, that makes all the zombie companies blow up at once. All the companies in the United States that are living on low interest rates already under huge stress, if rates go up further, they blow up. That makes you and your neighbors, if you have a bunch of debt, a bunch of credit card debt, if you have a bunch of debt, right, that makes the economy implode. So that's option number one. When the economy implodes, right, if they actually deliver the hard medicine, which they won't, by the way, most very unlikely. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just giving you my opinion, but they won't really do that. But if they did, everything implodes. And then, guys, then, then the value of silver and gold do well because the dollar, as it implodes, goes in the toilet. Now, what's more likely to happen, because Jerome didn't mention this, but a very, very smart analyst, actually three of them who I read last night, said this is what the Fed does. The Fed will say, oh, yeah, we can't directly monetize the debt. Meaning, Jerome, oh, you know what? Let's get him out. This guy, Jerome, okay, he can't just simply press a button, make money, and give it to the U.S. government. He can't do that. OK, he's got to make it real complicated. So what they do is they buy it from the banks. They have the big banks, their big buddy bank banker friends. They buy all the debt from the U.S. government. And then the Fed makes unicorn fart dust money on their computer. Plick, plick, and they buy it from the big banks so they can still monetize it when that happens. And that's going to have to happen because they're beholden. They don't want their system to go down when that happens. This is where it gets super interesting. Guys, that's dilutive. 
that's the end game. That's when finally people start to wake up and realize, okay, they already created 50% of the dollars that are in existence, 40%, whatever, during the, during the little health crisis we had a few years back. And now they got to print even more. And silver price and gold price, I'm telling you, at that point are going to be on a rocket ship. Uh, there's just no way. Now, someone else put forward another scenario which is very interesting, that if the Fed just won't print money, that Congress could abolish the Fed and move the Fed directly under the control of the Treasury Department. I mean, you know, what's that lady who runs it? What's her name? I forget her name. You guys want to say hi to her? Here she is, our favorite. She's so trustworthy, so sweet. She's like a grandma, you know? Like, she would never do anything. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot. She used to be the head of the Federal Reserve. Now she's the head of the Treasury. The debt system doesn't work. The fact that people aren't up in arms about what's going on in this country, the pillaging of our country by our leaders, is a, a abomination, if that's the right word. It's and, and if and if you're a politician who wants to talk about like, oh, maybe we need to balance the budget. Maybe we need to try to deal with the uh, thank you, Ancient Tom, for the super chat. Wow. Very cool. I'll have to read that. I can't read it right now. I'm going to look back and see what you said. But thank you. Maybe, you know, if you're you're like a fringe. I'm at the neighborhood pool. I guess that would be like the next thing I could pull out if people, if I don't want to talk to anybody, start talking about how we need to balance the national budget. Everybody be like, huh? What? You know, like I love professional sports, kind of, not really, kind of, sort of, Cardinals, St. Louis Cardinals baseball games, but that's all people want to talk about. How are the Cardinals doing? How about the freaking national debt? Why don't we talk about that? Uh, you know what? I got to run over here and check on my kid, right? I mean, people just don't care. I don't know, guys. I mean, am I nuts that I care about the national debt? That's my first question for you today. Ancient Tom says, my family and I <coughs> all have accounts in the same bank. My daughter, granddaughter, grandson, and myself also with a business. My new motto, the family that banks together, tanks together. <laughs> Well, yeah, you may consider uh, Ancient Tom diversifying your banks. Um, I work with a local bank here, like a small bank that's got like 12 branches. I know the bank president. Um, they seem, you know, I don't know. It's who knows, right? So am I crazy, guys? Yes or no? Should we be, should we be concerned about the national debt? Yes or no? I'm just, I just want to hear from you. Am I nuts? It just really, it really irks me because either way it plays out, it doesn't look good for, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, think I have kids. I have twin 11 year old daughters. It doesn't look good for them. And I think, does it make you mad or is it just me? It's like, it didn't have to be this way. We didn't have to, we didn't, they didn't have to pillage the system. I, you know, not all the politicians are corrupt. I think there's some, probably a few decent people, but a lot of the people, and it seems like the ones that get to the top are pretty damn corrupt. And, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I'd like to be hopeful. And this is not a political show and I'm not talking Democrat, Republican. I just hope some decent, honest person gets up there and then I'll shut up, okay? A benevolent dictator. <laughs> oh man, the money is corrupt. Everything is corrupt. All right, Paul K. Yeah, we're over $32 trillion in debt and there's no limit and we're running deficits. I mean, it's nuts. And what's the world doing? Did you hear about what the world's doing now, the BRICS countries? But it's not just that. There's this new system uh, that Iran is is putting together, and India's joining it. It's outside the SWIFT. You know what the SWIFT system is? Hold on one second. I got to read this to you because this is very interesting. Bear with me as I grab my notes. All 
I'm coming back. I mean, the world is moving away from the dollar. The world is saying, bye-bye, dollar. Every day, every day, there's new news stories. The world is just like, we're through with the U.S. dollar. I mean, and what is that going to mean for the future of this country, for the future of the dollar? I think we need to be super concerned. And it's like our leaders, you know, the mainstream media, they don't care. They're just like, well, nothing bad ever happens. We had a financial crisis in 2008, and they can figure out anything. The stock market's up. Everything's awesome. We're doing great. You know, I feel like, uh, I, don't know the, I don't know these analogies everybody uses, but like, they're rearranging the deck, the chairs on the uh, on the on the on the deck of the of the Titanic. There's there's our good friend Pat Holland. We are in MMT, modern monetary theory. Basically, we just print money as the government needs and wants. It's a one way. Yeah, thank you, Pat. It is. It's like a one way ticket to a banana republic. I mean, I, this hit me the other day. I was driving home from work. I work at night. I have like a retirement job that I took. Wonderful job. I'll tell you more about it later. Best job in the world. Wonderful. It's in a park right by my house, a mile. I have a one-mile commute. Anyway, I'm driving home because some days I walk, some days I drive. But I'm driving in my 18-year-old jalopy Acura TSX. And this has to do with what Pat Holland just said. And I'm driving through the park, and I run all the stop signs because it's like 9 o'clock at night, and there's nobody in the park, right? And I'm driving home, and it just hit me. I had to pull over and write this down. And it's blatantly obvious, but I was like, you know what? Our country did pretty darn good up until 1971 when we were on the gold standard, right? I mean, we did pretty darn good here in the United States. Think about what happened after 1971 when President Richard Nixon, and they called him Tricky Dick. This is not a political channel, but they called him Tricky Dick. He temporarily took us off the gold standard, temporarily, just temporarily for the last 50 years. How has that worked out for the United States? right? I ask you that question. I mean, how has it worked out, right? We are heading toward Banana Republic because now the debt's so big, nobody wants to buy the debt. So the rates, the value of the bonds go down, the rates go up, right? That creates more debt because there's more interest that needs to be paid. And that, it's like a, it's like a, it's, it's like a, 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 a spiral, a horrible, horrible, horrible spiral. And then, you know, what's the way to get out of it? Uh, conflict, right? Or uh, it's crazy. I'm sorry. I'm on a little bit of a rant today. Hello, Ron's basement dwellers. That's right. When you're in the basement with me, you're always welcome here. And you are a basement man or a basement woman, because don't forget... <clears throat> Uh-oh. Did I lose you? Nope, you're back. June 14th. I wrote it down. There you go. June 14th is International Women's Silver Day. We have more and more women that are joining the stacking community, and that's awesome on every level. You're all welcome here, right? Um, more and more women, and women are smart. I'm married to one, Susie, Silver Susie, and... Uh, the more we have that are with us that are awakening to value. And that goes back to what Pat Holland said, right? That we are a banana republic. And that in, in, in my, my moment of dumb insight that I had driving home in my car, but like we did good on the on the gold and silver standard. It worked good, right? It worked really well. Look how how's it worked since 1970. Eh. <clears throat> you know, that can be that can be argued. So it's called the Asian Clearing Uni Union. The Asian Clearing Union. I'd not heard of that until this morning, but it's backed by Iran. It's a it's a competitor to the SWIFT banking system. India signed up. Like eleven new countries just signed up. Breaking news, right? Iraq bans the U.S. dollar. Bans it. I mean, I don't I don't even understand. I thought like I thought we conquered Iraq, and now they're saying no. Nah, I don't know what I don't know. I'm not I'm not a geopolitical guru. I'm like Iraq banned the US dollar? I mean, come on. I don't that that's a little crazy. Egypt ditches the US dollar. <coughs> the 
they're doing deals directly with China, Russia. Uh, everybody's trading now in their name. It's like half the world is off the U.S. dollar. It's scary, guys. It is a scary, scary situation. There's a great video out, uh, a, a bullion dealer in Utah. How do you like the sound of $600 silver? And this guy, he was like the... Um, he was like the, the 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 coin shop of the year award, like for four straight years. And he, man, he lays it on the line. He says six hundred dollars silver. <coughs> Excuse me, I had to cough. I had to mute you for a moment. Hope you enjoyed the silence. Anyway, he says six hundred dollar silver, six hundred dollar silver, and he says that's conservative. I don't know. I also just want to point out, okay, I also just want to point out that Sprott put out an article still predicting $2,300 gold by the end of the year. Constitutional set. Yeah, you saw that th when, Ron? <laughs> I don't know. Go watch the video when you're done here. <clears throat> Look, I, you may not agree with me, but I think $600 silver is possible, right? Right depending on how the system holds up or or collapses. Uh, I mean, we could have 6000 We could have $60,000 silver. Don't kid yourself. Keith Newmeyer, I just heard him again the other day. Keith's a great guy, you know. I had an interview with him, I don't know, three weeks ago. Keith Newmeyer is not a crackpot. Triple-digit silver, uh, right? Okay, $100 silver. I don't know. <clears throat> I went Zimbabwe now. <laughs> Silence is golden. Right, right. All right, I had some questions for you guys. I had some questions. Oh, the interesting thing that was brought up by Sprat was, very simply, $2,300 gold because it's a, it's a statistical fact that Within 90 days of the Fed pausing, like they did, on average, on average, within 90 days, they start to cut rates. So what's the date today? That would be mid-September that we could start to see rate cuts. Do you think, here, here's my question for you. <coughs> Please answer yes or no after you earn this. We got 100 thumbs up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's one ring of the bell for each ten thumbs up. Uh, do you think, let's say by Halloween, October 31st, that we will have rate cuts? Because you know what's going to happen. Yes or no, rate cuts by Halloween. I'm going to say yes. I'm not saying a confident yes, but I'm saying yes. Like if you were forced to answer right? Like Russian roulette. You can't say maybe. Yes or no, by Halloween, will we have rate cuts? I would have to say yes. Not a super confident yes, but a relatively confident yes, because that's going to make the silver price and the gold price explode. We got to know from original intent. We got to know from Blaine. We got to know from SoCal. We got to know. We got to know from Andrew. We got to know from Robert. We got a yes, maybe from Coin Shop Chris. Blaine says no. Dean Ridley says no. The Golden Griffin from St. Louis, Viani, says yes. Blaine now says yes. Blaine's changing his mind. Blaine says maybe. All right, Blaine, no more answers for you. Constitutional Stacker says yes, because they know that the markets crash in the fall. Paul K. doesn't know. Remember, you had to answer yes or no. You owe us a bell hit. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yep, we got that under control. I'm thinking Black Swan. Well, that's that's the, yes, Ancient Tom. Yes. Thanks again for the super chat, Ancient Tom. That is much appreciated. It helps out, trust me. Tani Lubers, yes. 300 people are watching Ron's Basement on a Monday morning. We are changing the world, folks. Thank you for being here. Each and every one of you on Halloween, I'll dress as Janet Yellen. <laughs> Good one, Thomas Toops. You get the comment of the day. How about those cards? Yeah, they're not doing well. Okay, yes. A storm is coming. When hell freezes over. 
Yes, you should. Okay, that's, thank you. Thank you. Whoever brought up the black swan, Craig, you know, guys, we're talking about what's going on and it's scary, right? What is happening in the world? What's happening domestically in the United States is frightening, scary, okay? No matter how you slice it or dice it, economically, politically, uh, people are in, you know, whatever, right? Geopolitically in the world, scary. Half the world hates us, more than half the world. Okay, look, they don't hate me and you personally, right? But they, as the idea, are not happy with the United States. It's not us. It's, you know, it's okay. I, I, maybe it's not okay to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, it's, they're mad at our leaders. And, you know, it, I guess it's okay for me to say that because, like, all the surveys show that Americans are not happy with their politicians. People will say, yeah, they're a bunch of crooks. They should have to wear jackets with patches on it like the NASCAR driver so you know who's buying them off, right? Um, so we don't like them. I mean, we don't like – I don't like the fact that the world – a lot of the world doesn't like us, but it's very scary, what's going on and they're binding together against us maybe we need to listen a little bit i don't know i'm not you know uh i just i don't i don't like that we're we're so unliked in the world um here's what i was sorry i went off on a tangent this is not a political channel uh but i think what we need to remember okay is we're talking about what's going on right now uh, financially with gold, right? The national debt, and it looks horrible. We're not even factoring in a black swan, another black swan type event. Who knows? Maybe it's BRICS this summer on August 22nd, right? Who knows what could happen? We're not even... And the black swans happen. We know that, right? I'm not saying I don't want it to happen. I don't want bad things to happen. I don't want crazy crap to, stuff. Sorry, I don't use net naughty words on this channel. But it does happen, right? So think about under, under current circumstances, the prospects for gold and silver look amazing, okay? They just, from a value perspective, from everything else, we're not even factoring in what a black swan would do. Like that little banking issue we had 12 weeks ago, which hasn't gone away, right? Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> um, I'm reading some of the comments. You're making me laugh. What if a black swan hits? I mean, come on, guys. Pat Holland, my friend. We need to have... Do you guys want to see a video with Pat Holland? Maybe he can spare 15 minutes with me later this week. Um, I want to talk to Pat about the guys at the Silver Degen Club. Uh, I, I met with this, again, that's a new Reddit community. It's an offshoot from Wall Street Silver. I spent an hour on the phone with these guys on Saturday night. Um, they are legit. It's in my book, I mean, um, and, 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 and just, I think... Uh, doing right by the silver community. Again, it's called Silver Degen, D-E-G-E-N, like Silver Degenerate Club. I remember it as SDC, Silver Dollar City, Silver Degen Club. Um, I don't know if Pat's looked into them or not or talked with them, but really a, what I think is a great, great group of guys. All right, Pat, that sounds good. Uh, I had more questions for you. Are you following? Are you following the COMEX situation? The registered inventory. Yeah, that amount of silver that's in the vaults that's used to satisfy all those contracts. And I heard Keith Newmeyer talk about this the other day. <laughs> he was like, and this really put it in perspective because we know that there's like 300 contracts, 400 contracts written for each ounce of silver that's actually at the COMEX, right? That's where they set the price. And Keith said, he's like, the COMEX trades like a billion dollars or, or a billion ounces, I'm sorry, of silver a day in the whole mining sector only produces 800 million per year. So that means in one day they trade as much supposed silver as the whole mining sector 
produces during the course of a year. And I want to reiterate this, guys. I know we are in scary times, but I think it's so important for us to remember that most of us, and I know that includes you, are good, nice people, especially the people that watch my videos and um, or join our community. I don't know if they're really even my videos anymore. Uh, you know, really great people. It's a little sliver of the population, probably the equivalent of the sliver that we are that are into silver and gold, but not us, a different sliver of people who are really the crux and really, um, um, you know, uh, it is just a crazy situation that unfolds. Guys, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for your support, okay? And I'll see you soon.